and we're back with some more RimWorld and today we will put the finishing touches on the Jade Palace. We are going to make sure that everything is made out of either blood steel or leather or whatever it takes. Or jade of course because of its, its innate beauty and the way we harvest it all. This entire base is just going to be a monument to perfection, recycling and Emily of course. Wait a minute, someone's having an affair. Matt Kiernan and Douglas Finney by jokingly probing at his crafting skills. Okay, uh, Matt and Douglas now want to sleep together, consider setting them a double bed, but Douglas is married to Jason. Right, so is this going to actually affect anyone's mood is the problem. So Douglas and Jason are the only two I care about because uh, Jason is actually our best crafter and I don't want them getting unhappy. But Jason is currently fine? Well, in that case, you're staying in the same bed. Uh, Douglas is... yeah, they don't seem to care. And Matt, uh, sleeping alone. Well, tough, buddy. That's a minus four for you, but uh, I'm happy with our crafter being happy. We're going to send off a caravan containing Magnus and Sean Björg to go to the Empire. We're really, really, really hoping that they've got themselves a joy wire just so we can finish this off. And how are we doing here? Oh, excellent. They have finally lost the memories of, I think it was, I want to say mother and son dying or something, or two other relatives are finally gone. It took about 30 days and 30 attacks we had to deal with, but now we should be able to crank up their mood high enough. I mean, once we wake them up, give them some beer and stuff. In fact, let's do that now. Uh, yeah, I say we administer some go juice first. Yeah, get them some go juice going on. We'll administer some go juice, and then once they're up and about, we can get them to put on an LTEC hat. Give them, well, you know what? Let, let's show, not tell. All right, go juice applied. They have arisen. Perfect. Now, what we're going to get you to do is immediately crack open, crack into some psychite tea. Okay, once the psychite tea is done, now we're doing something stupid like run half a mile to consume it. All right. We want you to consume the ambrosia next. All right. What's your mood looking like? Okay, your mood is going to be totally maxed out. And boom, perfect. Now, anything else we need? You know what? Let's get you to pick up an LTEC staff, namely because this will increase their size sensitivity, which will increase the amount of mood bonus they give. Now, everyone's mood is currently getting, they're getting a plus one from it. It'll, uh, it'll get better and better as their mood gets higher, and it'll get amplified by that. As well as that, we should have, yes, Forceware LTEC Skullcap. Yes, please. Perfect. That should max out, well, that's as much size sensitivity as we're giving them. There's other clothing we could give them, but... No, that's way too much effort. This gives him the most boost for the least amount of effort on our part. Now, let's uh, stand them around in a nice, beautiful room for a bit until their mood maxes out at 100%. Then we're going to dope them unconscious in a hospital bed until the go juice wears off. The only reason they're conscious right now, if you're not aware of this, is because of the go juice. The go juice actually increases consciousness. They're actually about 28% normally, and once you dip below 30, you're gone. So they're at level, they're at 28% consciousness when they don't have go juice in them, and they're at 47 when they do have go juice in them. This way we were able to keep them awake just long enough, then once their mood maxes out, we knock them unconscious, therefore locking their mood and keeping everyone nice and happy. What's everyone's feelings now on this? Uh, yeah, everyone's getting a plus 9 psychic harmony from this. In fact, it's gone up to plus 10. It should keep going up. Oh, no, still plus 11. Yep, the higher their mood gets, the stronger this becomes. All right, they're just about maxed out. They're at 98%. So we're going to assign you to that bed. Go, hey, hey. Why are you not getting into that bed? Rest until healed. Perfect. Now, someone will be along shortly to dope you up. So make sure you stay on 100% mood. Jason. Boom. All right. Now I just got to make sure I come back in a couple of hours and do it again. You see, they're high on go juice, which means for the next 11 hours, they're going to keep trying to wake up. So I just got to dose them again in about four hours time and then another four hours after that to make sure they stay unconscious. And then we have a permanently locked mood beacon. In fact, let's try Aaron here. Aaron has no special sensitivity and they are getting a plus 20 mood boost. Plus 20, plus 20. Azula's getting, wait, yep, plus 20. But, where is it, where is it, uh, one of our pawns, Miko here, they have psychic sensitivity, do they? Yeah, they're psychically sensitive, and, oh, god damn it, where are they going? They're going to hold some beer, whatever. When they come back, we'll check their needs, but they should be getting about 25 or something stupid like that. Oh, yes, and they need to be renamed, of course. Yunners 3. Well, you know, we've, we've got a theme going here, it's fine. 
Perfect, now we just need one more joy wire. For this next attack, I decided to light some fires. We had some time to prepare for it, so I lit a few fires to try and encourage them down the center. Seems to be working, though. I don't know if I'd enter a corridor of flames. And on the other side is a line of skulls and miniguns. Just, I don't know. I wouldn't be too motivated to go running in there myself. But Apier managed to find a shortcut around. Uh, never mind. Brian, Brian spotted him. And you're dead. Pity. My only regret is that we don't get to harvest all the skulls from that. There's an awful lot of careful shooters, I'd say, in there, but that, that was beautiful. It just corralled them all right into the middle, and then we just got to rip them all to shreds with minigun fire. That was absolute perfection. Now, if you wouldn't mind, finish loading up that uh, transport pod with gunk. Once it's loaded up, we've got one last purchase to make. Our trade caravan has arrived at the Empire, and our hopes have been dashed. They don't have any... They don't have any joy wires. It's not fair. But it's okay. There's, they still have some good stuff that we can take that will help us out. First, we'll get rid of the uh, the leather and oh, yeah, the berries. Do we don't need those? But what they do have that I'm very interested in. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, Death Smasher. This thing is a kill-focused weapon, meaning anytime someone kills someone with it, they gain 20% psi focus. This could be very useful for a team like ours. I'm thinking about we should farm some creativity or farm some uh, inspirations and oh. Yeah, that should just about work. We have about nine grand in change on us. I think we can afford this. We're also going to pick up the Death Smasher, the Prestige Cataphract Helmet, and the Tech Print for Flesh Shaping. The more Tech Prints we can knock out, uh, long term you'd be looking at a... Well, oh, actually, no, put them there. Long term, what you'd be looking at is knocking them all out because they can't show up again. Once you've actually gotten them, they're less likely to show up in any of the trade screens. And oh my god, the amount of... Masterwork and legendary stuff we're cranking out is just incredible. For a little bit of style at the end, we're going to put down some jade marble slabs down here. You can get uh, slab styles for your floor. We can't make spike core ones out of it, unfortunately. Spike core is made entirely out of steel, but we can use jade with the morbid style, and it looks pretty damn nice, if I do say so myself. I think we might move some of the chairs a little bit. We're also replacing all of the chairs with steel, because blood steel is a better material than wood, of course. What the hell? Legendary work, masterwork, Alley Piper's created legendary pew, uh, masterwork pew, masterwork pew, masterwork pew, masterwork pew. <laughs> Dear lord, Alley. Well, your construction skill is 20 and you are a mechanicus, but stop the spam for the love of god. All right then, that's looking like a much nicer temple, as well as that, those stack. So as far as I'm aware, we're getting the bonus from the the morbid slab, plus the actual spike core in there. That temple is just, oh, hells yeah. You know, they do look great, but they appear to be upside down. Let's try, yep, yep, you can actually rotate them. Perfect, perfect. Now that, that looks like a proper temple to Emily right there. I think I st I'll leave the altar as slate. I was gonna switch it out for Jade, but you know what? Oh, that base is just beautiful. Now we just gotta do our driveway. Well, it's time to get someone bonded. We're going to bond Miko to this kill-focused persona hammer thingy. Now, this does mean... It doesn't mean they can't use a gun anymore. It just means, well, we can't use both of them at the same time. But that is fine. Now that they are bonded to it, well, let's just skip forward till the next attack comes and we can show you the plans for this one. This raid is unfortunately attacking us immediately. I was hoping to get some mortar shells off. But that's fine. We can uh, load up the mortars and we can take a few pot shots at them anyway. They seem to be sappers, so maybe we can get off a few rounds here and make a bit of a mess. Especially considering the accuracy on our shooters. Come on. Oh yeah, they're moving a little bit too fast. Ooh. Well, not exactly what I was hoping, but maybe we can get a few injuries out of that one. Oh, Yeah, I think that hit a few. Dear lord, that was... How many of you are still... Are, Oh yeah, so we got 37 of them, and a few of them should be at least injured and bleed out. You know what, we'll let them uh, load the mortars back up, get the accuracy set, and uh, then then we'll sort out something else. We're going to have to go over here, and I presume they're going to try and dig through these walls, and when they do, we'll be waiting for them. Another few shots with the mortar can't hurt. Well, they can't hurt us. Oh, damn it, I would have saved it for over there. I maybe should have uh, forward targeted a bit. Oh well, never mind. Now, this is what you would call close-in fire support. 
Oh, oh, oh yes. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I, I think we got a few with those. All right. Now it's time to take that hammer out there and uh, uh, milk it for a few legendary miniguns. Let me show what I mean. Jason here is one of our best crafters at 19. Suborbital is also one of our great crafters at 16. And Teabag over here is our other crafter at 17. Now, what we've done here is we've given Miko the nice hammer and they've also got Word of Inspiration, which we can just quickly apply to Jason there. Come on, give him a good one. Not work frenzy, unfortunately. But that's not the end of it. That's not the end of it. It's fine. So what we can do is we can get them to... Hey, would you finish them off? No, nope, damn it. Why can't you... Ah, melee, melee skill 6 required for finishing off. Well, that's going to be a problem. But I have an idea. Yep. I don't think you can gain melee skill from hitting a downed enemy, can you? No, it does not appear so. But they still gain the Psy Focus regen from smashing them. So where's the next one? There's Spider over there. And as their Psy Focus is at 36%, then we go to... Yep, go like that. And once they're hit him a couple of times, 56%. Perfect. All we need now is a few more volunteers. And would you look at that? The mortars left some nice injured people behind for us. A few magical hammer smacks later, and Miko is ready to try a word of inspiration on Teabag. Inspired creativity. I know exactly what we're burning that on. Minigun. Definitely a minigun. Now, let's see if we can't give one to Suborbital as well. We got, like, a bunch more inspiration just lying about the place. One other inspired moment. Just shoot frenzy. God damn it. Well, yeah, it'll be a while before we... It'll be another eight days before that shoot frenzy wears off. But in the meantime, we might as well recharge uh, Miko. No point having them recharging manually when they're still... Plenty of focus lying about the place. One last thing I would like to try, just because we can. If we capture someone, execute them, and get Miku to do it. No. Oh, God damn it. Just, uh, could you prioritize executing them? Will that actually increase your side focus? 74.8? Oh, wow. Okay, that's, um... That's excellent. That is absolutely excellent. That means that... They can execute people and get Psy Focus from it, meaning you can just keep a bank of Psy Focus around the place. Not only that, it improves their mood, so now they've got a plus 10 for executing a prisoner. And everyone else gets a plus 3, I want to say? Eh, where is it? Execution, plus 3. Yep, for two days. Oh, wow. That is, uh, that is thoroughly broken. Now, where is that teabag? Yeah. I want you to put me together a legendary minigun, if you wouldn't mind. I think this may be one of the worst things I'm doing right now. Poor Zari here are, uh... Our slave that we're keeping around the psychically hypersensitive that we've given 50% brain damage to that we want to turn into another meat beacon? Well, we haven't got our hands on a joy wire to reduce their consciousness by another 20 percentage points. However, I haven't bothered assigning them any slave quarters or anything like that, so they've just been sleeping on the floor, and they're they're fine with it. It turns out the psychic harmonizer from Yunners is giving them a plus 37 mood boost. They're, they're psychically sensitive, so... Psych psychically hypersensitive, so they're getting extra dose of it. Everyone else is getting a normal 20, but they're getting 37, meaning they can't have any mental breaks. Also, combine that with slave expectations, a bunch of other things, and the fact that they work entirely inside the octagon, yeah, they're just super happy at all the time. Kind of, kind of evil, not gonna lie. We're about to find out if Teabag's inspiration is about to pay off. Come on, come on, and where did Zary go? Oh, Zary wandered off. And come on, give us a legendary minigun. Legendary. The odds of them giving a leg legendary are so good, though, because they're they're a mechanicus, or they're basically they got the engineering uh, ability on them, which means they get a plus one to their quality crafting. Plus, the inspiration gives them another plus two, meaning even if they produce just a normal good one, it'll automatically get a triple bonus and go up to legendary. And the chances of producing a good minigun when you've got crafting of seventeen, I just looked it up. You have ninety-three percent odds of crafting a legendary at this level, at crafting 17 with that much stack bonuses. Hells yes. There is also something I've been meaning to do for a while. Good Dog here is going to get administered a healer mech serum. Yup. Yup. We're going to use a healer mech serum on a dog. Because of course we are. Because Good Dog deserves it. Because they're a good dog. Now let's make sure it heals their spine. You better heal their spine. I can't do a second one. Finding a second one might take forever. You heal their tail! How does it heal their tail? That makes no sense. That makes no sense. Their spine versus their tail. Well, I suppose they, they, now they can wag their tail? I mean... Okay, they can wag their tail now. That's... It's wonderful. That's uh, just great. You can now wag your tail. At least that's that's something. Oh my god, that's... 
<sighs> anyway. Uh, nothing like wiping out a few hundred tribals to, you know, calm you down again. Anyway, good dog is now able to wag their tail at least, so it's not a complete loss. Not a complete loss. We just need a second Resurrector Mech Serum. I'm not sure that's going to be possible in a reasonable time frame. But I have been thinking about one other thing. And that is getting our hands on a joy wire. I'm thinking the closest Empire settlement is way over here. And perhaps we can find a way to get there and back. And they, they're the ones most likely to have a joy wire. So I'm thinking we're going to put together a little bit of a caravan. I have got uh, four of these transport pods loaded up. They can't quite make it the whole way. This is the full range on it. So it can't quite make it the whole way out to the Empire. But... I got an idea. The plan here is quite simple. Using four transport pods, we're going to send Tessex, Magnus, and Sean Biog out on a caravan with an elephant. Yeah, turns out the elephant is more cost effective to fire than the horses. Turns out two horses can carry more, but they take up more. Never mind. Just the elephant worked out just right, and we can send over this much human leather. We're going to sell off the thrombo fur because. Turns out we're not going to be able to afford to find any more of that anyway. No thromb thrombos are going to show up in this map, and we're going to send along all of our silver as well. So we're going to load that all up into all four of those transport pods and fire them off. Uh, give it a minute while the, the pawns load all of that up. At the same time, I am going to plant a whole bunch of Devil Strand. I realize we don't have enough Devil Strand here in the eyes to keep us in dusters. We're slowly running out of dusters and over time I don't think we'll be able to hit replacement rates. So giant crop of Devil Strand it is. And uh, at the same time, we've also been uh, installing some driveways. I want to like just finish this place out just a little bit, make, make it look... Make it look nice and pretty before we go. All right, everyone's loaded up. We have a group of transport pods with, let's see, Sean Biog's in one. We got Thumbafur and Tessex in another. Magnus, a bunch of silver in another. And a whole bunch of human leather and an elephant in another. How the math of that works, don't ask me. Uh, select launch group. Yep, we'll take them all. Time to launch. All right, we need to get you as close as possible here. I was thinking there was also one over here, but that's actually even further away. And, well, those ones are really beyond reach, but they would have been perfect. Imagine, imagine if you had settled near there. Pity it was uh, all desert. Anyway, uh, we can get you to about there. And done. However, that's not all. Uh, oh, actually, while we're here, let's just maybe rebuild all of these. It might be a plan. We're going to need those again at some point in the future. But uh, where is it? Yeah, transport pod's on the way. Now what we want to do is get them all the last leg of the way. For that, we're going to want to go to Magnus. Uh, Magnus here, if we check under permits, has a transport shuttle. Except, think kindly. So, now all we have to do, call in a shuttle. Now, this can only be used once or twice. But I suppose we could. Yeah, maybe if we flew twice, we could get from there to there. Let me just double check this. How far would it get us? No, we'd only get to about here, even if we doubled down on that. Hmm, pity. Going over there and getting hitting up three Empire places at the same time would be lovely. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll just trade. Yep. And done. That made it much, much easier to get there. Otherwise, we would have had to walk over land. Now, please, 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 for the love of God, have a joy wire. Just be nice, would you? What's it doing? Feels like it's... Oh. Uh, what's going on? I'm reloading. There's, there's no way. That they're just... Those people have now vanished. There's no way to access them and they're gone. What are you doing? Shuttle. And we can't actually do anything with the shuttle either. We can select it, but we can't move it or... Well, that's a weird bug. After a little bit of playing around, yeah, don't ask when the last autosave was, I came back here and I saved it just before this final jump and it turns out you can't land on top of that settlement. I'm pretty sure in the past you could land on top of settlements and trade with them directly via a transport shuttle, but you can't anymore. It just died the second time around too. So, this time around, we're just going to walk in on foot like a bunch of normal people. Now, please give us a joy wire. Please, Emily. Just just be nice. Well, okay, you don't have to be nice, but if you could help out, that would be great. Uh, psychic harmonizer, psychic reading, psychic sensitizer. A half cycler might work out. Uh, wait a minute, how much does that reduce your consciousness by again? 
wait, wait, wait. The half sector only reduces consciousness by 15%. But you know what reduces it by the 20 that would be really convenient? The joy wire. Which, if we buy this tech print, it will allow us to research. Thank you, Emily. Perfect. Oh, uh, let's ch check out what uh, Persona weapon they've got. Pro tip, when it comes to the Empire settlements, each time they restock, they end up with one Persona weapon. There's always a Persona weapon there, so the more you check out, the better. Psychic hypersensitivity. This weapon amplifies the wielder's psychic sensitivity by 40%. Only applies when the weapon is held. Well, nah, we don't need that. Another another kill-happy one would be nice, though. On top of the tech print for brain wiring, we're also going to get a psychic sensitizer. Why not? They're uh, hard enough to come by and we can't make them. Also, the fact that they've got so many harmonizers, like they've got three harmonizers here. I love that the Empire is just all set up to make meat beacons. Yeah, we've got uh, everything we need there. We even got a skill trainer for social and a bunch of plasteel. We will take all of that. And now it is time to go home. So we will fire skip back to the combat tile. Uh, yes, yeah, skip to random ally. Thank you kindly. And, oh, wow, they've already vanished. Oh, in that case, where'd, where'd you go? Where? And landed. Well, that is excellent. Now it's just time to unload everything. Ah, this means we can have our second meat beacon up and running in no time. Now, where did Zari go? Zari, come here, buddy. Wait, wait, wait. We still have to get the tech print applied. Carl, go apply the tech print. We'll, uh, we'll sort out the rest in a bit. And that's a whole bunch more plasteel for... Actually, how many st how much plasteel have we got? Only 380. Well, we're, we're chewing through the plasteel. Namely, due to all the bionic augments we applied. If we go and have a look at our colonists here, and we go have a look at movement, you'll notice all of our colonists, except for our slaves, of course, have 100% or better movement. We fixed all the people who had dodgy legs. Manipulation-wise, same thing. Everyone's got 100 manipulation or better. Give them all bionic arms if they had missing fingers. And sight-wise, everyone is perfect. It's just... Oh, actually, there is one thing left to do, and that is hearing. I think someone's missing an ear. Yep, Paul Platt is missing an ear, and Grumpy Gran has hard hearing... has... Uh, well, hearing problems, but you know what? Grumpy Grand kind of, kind of suits her. Now, I'm pretty sure I built an ear at some point, did we? Yes, we did. So we can install your right ear and just make sure you got the correct medicine for that. Yeah, once you're finished feeding the prisoners, uh, rest until it's healed. In fact, we kept a bunch of these around just so we have some uh, charge batteries for Miko. Uh, that way, whenever Miko needs some, uh, some juice to charge up Word of Inspiration, we can just like clip a few of those and boom, we'll be done. All right, let's uh, speed up the extant tech print applied. Let's immediately research brain wiring. I can't even remember what we were researching before this. Uh, where is it? Yeah, brain wiring. Excellent. 2,000 points? Okay, that might take a minute. One thing I'd like to use is uh, give Mitchell here this social trainer. Mitchell is our uh, our person for converting people, and they get a bonus when they're doing the conversions, or they get it much better. They went from 15 to 18. That may be the highest social I've ever had on a pawn, ever. Right, something to be said for having a double burning passion in your social. All right, uh, let's see what the next attack is, which is good. We just ran out of stuff to recycle. That was... Oh, excellent time. Actually, no, wait, we've got a knife over there. There we go. They're attacking immediately. Right, that's fine. 584 enemies. That's, uh... Yeah, it's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. We'll just uh, get everyone into the kill box and, and have it all sorted out once the game stops freezing like crazy. Uh, which reminds me, we need to do another row of... Well, we just gotta finish out our, our four driveways on the cardinal points. Everyone's mood right now is pretty great, but I thought we'd try a few of the rituals we've got going on. For example, what is the hominid slaughter, which we haven't done yet? I think we'll have a go at this and see how it works out. It says we've got zero of ten pews, but we've got several pews. I, I don't know why it's not detecting them, but I don't care. Let's, uh, let's get everyone together and have ourselves a little bit of a hominid... What was it called again? Hominid slaughter? Okay. What's going on, and where is our hominid? Okay, so they spoke about blades in flesh, broke into a chant, cackled, spoke about the warmth of blood, described the meaning of death, talked about love and death, discussed love and death, discussed the warmth of blood again. Okay, I'm beginning to think we're the bad guys. Talked about guts on the floor. Oh, yeah, 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 more, more stuff about warmth blood, uh, art of cutting. Oh, wow, Symbol describe symbolizing pain. 
Explained controlled cruelty. Jesus. Offer thoughts on the music of screams and explain the warmth of blood. Mitchell, I think your death and resurrection has uh, definitely improved your oration skills. They are uh, much improved and uh, I think everyone's very happy with that. That was uh, very satisfying. Everyone was like, yeah, yeah, cheers for that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's, um, yeah, let's, not, let's not do one of those again anytime soon. Our prisoner section is starting to overflow just a little bit. I think it's time Miko did a, well, they had an inspiration already. Ali has now got an inspired surgery for some reason. But I'm thinking we can find four prisoners here who can uh, help charge him up again. Done. That is max eye focus gain instantly. Do you, Zeng, do you have a, an inspiration? Would, would you like an inspiration? You know what? Have an inspiration, Zeng. Don't know if it's even any good. You get an inspired recruitment. Well, we're, we're not using it, but whatever. Oh, that's another pawn gun nuts. Uh, whatever. We'll, uh... We'll get rid of them as well. I have to admit, the resources you gain from this strategy of playstyle is... Well, they're dark, but very, very effective. Uh, if we check under our colonists here, we have a lot of very inspired people. It's the combination of being able to dish out insp inspirations and everyone having such a massive mood bonus. We have a light wave here. Let's, let's have a quick check. Psychic Harmony, plus 20. Gorgeous environment. Everywhere is massively beautifully tiled. Luxuriantly comfortable. Uh, recreationally fully satisfied. Uh, plus 5, or plus 9 mood for the 5 executions that happened recently. That's going to last for a couple of days. Unbelievably impressive dining room, rec room, 8 human meat, 8 fine meals, spacious interior, sac satisfying sacrifice, human leather pants. Actually, that's plus 4. Uh, I think they're wearing two things. Most people are wearing like uh, human leather button-down shirts and human leather pants. And that, because of our religion, actually is giving us another plus four. <laughs> uh, rival died. Unbelievably impressive barracks. They're actually getting a plus three from the barracks. It's that impressive. Even though it's a barracks of shared communal stuff. The rival died. Emiliest surroundings. My rival died. My rival died. My rival died. Oh, and skull spikes. And wearing ideology color. They do have sky high, high expectations and some other negatives. But realistically... They're just massively happy. Everyone is so happy, and because of their maxed out mood, everyone is generating inspirations one every ten days. So, yeah, we're, we're doing pretty good. A little bit more uh, spike core tile down that side. I think we're almost done. We got one here, one here, one here, and then just uh, down this section as well. Steel-wise, how are we looking? We are up to 3,500. I think we can do a little bit more with the steel. Ah, brain wiring. Excellent. That means we can get on to the final stages of our plan. We have quickly constructed ourselves a joy wire, and at the same time, we have queued up five operations on Zari, our uh, uh, unwilling participant here. We're going to install a joy, wi joy wire. And Wait, no, I don't want to harvest their left kidney. I meant to say harvest their left lung. Yes, left lung. There we go. That should mean that, okay, so the joy wire will reduce their consciousness to 30%. Harvesting their lung will reduce it another 3%, putting them down at 27, making them unconscious. Psychic harmonizer will start spreading the joy, and psychic sensitizer will actually crank it up even more. We don't even need to, like, worry about their mood at the moment, because their mood is literally 100%. Uh, the reason their mood is 100% is because they're in range of the other psychic, har psychic harmonizer belonging to Yonners, so that plus 37 is... Really working out for them. That is like, wow, that's a lot. Oh, let's just double check. Yeah, I did change the medicine for them. Yep, yep, definitely. All right, let's get this on. Uh, oh, I'd like to point out here. Let's use Blake as a good example. Blake here is, well, there's Yunners. They're our meat beacon that actually gives us mood. So it has a range of 30 tiles. So from about ooh, there uh, to there. Actually, maybe it's one tile more. It depends. You know what? Let's find out. So they are still in range of Yunners, still in range of Yunners. Uh, now let's see, when you cross the sandbags, no, we're good. I'll be on the skull spikes. Only after you cross the skull spike threshold. Once you're on the skull spikes, super happy. Outside the skull spikes, a little bit less happy. I mean, it's not like their mood's going to dip anymore. They're still incredibly happy. But once this is finished, it should get even better. Now, doctors, where are you? Our first operation is... Better be a success. Excellent. Okay, joy wire installed. Next up, lung removal. Off you go, guys. Next up, Grumpy Grand's gonna scoop out your lung. And there we go. Successful operation. Wait, wait. Why are you feeding them meals? Don't don't feed them regular meals. Ah, uh, nope. Paste. 
They should be on paste. We don't want to accidentally give them food poisoning. That would be bad for their consciousness. Making sure they get paste means, well, it's cheaper, and at the same time, they can never get food poisoning. Well, we don't have time for this operation, unfortunately. Uh, we've got to go take care of a raid. Now, before this raid hits, I think we're going to scrap all of the corpses, because it's just... There's too much junk everywhere. Uh, we'll get rid of the remove corpses in current map. There we go. That, that cleans things up a bit. Uh, remove snow? Wait, no. Where is it? Where is the way to get rid of all of the nasty stuff? Oh, well, there goes a bunch of pawns. Let's clean up the world pawns again just one more time, just to hopefully speed this game along and uh, reclaim any memory. There we go. Now let's get back on to where were we? Ah, yes, taking care of this raid. Damn it, they're going to be really lazy about this, aren't they? I can tell just from looking at them. Uh, you know what? We'll just pop the marksmanship command now. We'll get Alvarez over there, and we'll get a couple more over that side. Just in case, I'm sure this is going to be a wonky raid. Uh, maybe we should get someone to finish off the operations. Yeah, might be an idea. How many have we got left? Two. Psychic Harmonizer and Psychic Brain Sensitizer. Tell you what, Gran, why don't you take the day off and uh, go do some operations while we're waiting? Actually, Gran's going to go grab a meal first, but that's fine. Once she's grabbed a meal, she can go take care of those operations. Everyone else can take care of uh, the bad guys. It must be really distracting trying to work at operations while there's nothing but minigun fire just blasting away in the background. But somehow I think Gran doesn't mind, namely because she's mostly deaf. So she doesn't mind, she doesn't care at all. It might have been listening to all of those guns that made her deaf in the first place. Tinnitus is a big problem in this colony. That's why hearing protection is so important. Alright, let's uh, finish out the ops on Zari here. Oh, I almost forgot before this finishes. Let's check on Gran. Gran's getting plus 20 from the Psychic Harmony from Yunners. Now, when that's done, Psychic Harmony from Zari is giving her plus 14. Oh! Damn it! I forgot to load this guy up with the uh, the other equipment beforehand. We're gonna have to dose dose, dose him with go juice. Ah, yeah, we gotta get him to pick up. Where is it? The staff and the helmet. But hey, he's already giving plus fourteen. The staff and the helmet will add him an extra six, and we're gonna put on a a psychic harmonizer inside him as well, just to boost that a little bit more. There is something I have been meaning to test for a while. Ali here has a thousand and fifty two kills, but I don't know if mortar kills count towards that. So we're going to fire a mortar shell right there, and we're going to see if her kills go from well, 1,052. Let's see what happens when this mortar shell hits. Come on. Okay, we're going from 1,052 to 55. Okay, that does actually work. Huh. That means mounting the mortars on big giant stacks is actually a really good way of boosting your kill count. Gran also finished the last of the operations, so that 14 went up to 16. Yeah, it turns out that uh, that Psychic Harmonizer added a plus two, and we'll get another plus two from the staff, another plus two from the Skullcap, bringing them... Well, actually, no, it should go to... 22? Never mind. That just means everyone's uh, everyone's mood right now is pretty solid. Uh, actually, wait, that's, that's Miko. They're actually... Miko has Psychic Sensitivity, so they're getting a 30 from one of them, a 24 from the other. That's... <laughs> Anyone inside the octagon? Super happy. Just so happy. Since the enemy's taking their time, I'm not going to bother wasting a bunch of mortar shells. We'll just move a bit closer. It seems once we get a little bit closer and get away from our defenses, they suddenly decide, hey, let's go. We're going to shred our walls a bit. It's not the worst thing in the world, so long as this hurries things along. We've only got 16 hours until the next wave hits. Oh, one last thing I want to check. Mitchell has 1,000 and... or Ali has 1,057 kills. However, all of these people were injured by her mortar strike. So she's got 1,057. If they bleed out from their injuries, does it still count as an alley kill? Or is it just they magically died for no apparent reason? I've always wondered about that. So it turns out, no. Uh, this pawn here is about to expire from their mortar wounds, and Ali has 1,057 kills. Uh, squid here is about to expire, and it's still, nope, no increment on Ali's kills. Turns out the kills only count if the blow kills them. If they bleed out from the wounds afterwards, doesn't count. That kind of skews things a little bit. Eh, not, not so badly, but it's just, uh, eh, just weird. We gave Zari a quick dash of go juice. Uh, now it's time to see if we can't boost their abilities a bit. You're going to equip that staff and then wear that skull cap. And let's keep an eye on Jason here and see how they're doing. You're getting a 16 from Zari right now. Come on. Quick staff, quick helmet, and now you're getting a 22 from Zari. Ah, genius. Now... You. Uh, we're going to anesthetize you again. Actually, first we're going to change your medicine. We don't need anything good on you anymore. T 
time to take care of a few pieces of accounting. We've actually, we've, uh, we're just putting a little extra layer of concrete all the way around. Well, it's not concrete, that's paved tile made of steel. Well, just to prevent any fires getting near our steel stockpiles. Uh, at the same time, uh, the uh, the eight days have elapsed, and these people, oh, you've still got a teabag picked up a sheet frenzy that'll be expired in four hours, but Suborbital and Jason don't have any inspirations currently on them at the moment. So let's try a word of inspiration on Jason, and inspired surgery. God, what's even your medical? Oh, you have a tendon medical. Fine, fine. Okay, off you go. Then we just got to recharge Miko on some prisoners. That means Miko is now back up to full juice again. Quick word of inspiration on Suborbital, and... Inspired creativity. Well, in that case, you're going to make a minigun, buddy. And once teabag... In four hours, we'll come back for teabag. Uh, though we might want to recharge Miko now. Wait, is there anything left to recharge on? How many... Oh, wow, there's only two left. Fine, we'll find some animals. Well, we're taking care of little bits of accounting. Uh, let's make sure Tessex get that skip side trainer. There's two skip side trainers we have. And uh, yeah, Tessex should grab one of those. And Miko... Oh, Miko is currently getting tended to. They had a little bit of a fight with a cassowary. But that's okay. They won, and they got the Psy focus out of it from smashing the cassowary down. All right, uh, what are we going to do with them? Oh, yes. Give someone an inspiration. Suborbital is about to burn their inspiration on a legendary minigun. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, Grumpy Gran. Adding surface details to a large sculpture. Okay, whatever. The more important bit is that Mitchell gets it. Our three original colonists now have legendary miniguns. So that would be, in terms of length of time in the colony, we've got Carl, Ali, and Mitchell. Every single one with a legendary minigun, every single one trigger happy. Ah, beautiful. And if we check on human-like kills, Carl in the lead with 1350. Ali, actually, we'll do the numbers in a minute. Let's just uh, tidy up. I think, I think it's finished. I think we have... I think we've done it. Now, before we finish up, by popular demand, there was a request to see if we could try incendiary shells on the attacking forces. Now, I've done this before, and last time I did it, it turned out to be, um, well, not great, to be honest. So, we'll give this a go, but from what I recall, just the fires don't work very well. Despite the much larger blast radius, they just don't have the same stopping power. So even hitting them with the flames, what happens is they tend to put them out. But I'm willing to be proven wrong, so we'll find out what four mortar shells do to... Oh, it's like thing, similar things in Visible Area. 340 enemies. Now, it's not the five or 600 we've had before, but for 340 enemies, we should still be looking at 50 or 60 kills here. Easy peasy. Problem is, it just doesn't have the damage, and they're so stacked on top of each other, they have a tendency to put out the flames too fast. So now, how many is... We got... We got... Yeah, 340. I, I, did we even kill any of them? That's the problem. You don't kill enough of them, it doesn't trigger them. You might injure a few and annoy them a little bit. Or maybe start it raining, but that's about all you're going to get. Tell you what, we'll hold fire for a bit, let them group back up and hit them with a second volley. Well, they don't seem to be putting out the fires very well. I think we'll just yeah, hit him again. Go for it. This is probably the most dense area, and our mortar specialists are pretty damn accurate. Let's see if they can get it right on top of them. Here comes four of them right about now. And how many we got left? 337. Oh, look, there, there's one of them down. They're, they're burning. And there's another one burning over there. It's just there's not enough stopping power to the uh, the incendiaries, unfortunately. You're much better off using the explosives, I find. Well, this was when I uh, was messing around on the 360, 295 colony map, or the one where we got about 200 colonists. I tried mass incendiary bombardment of like 60 incendiaries and it did almost nothing. I will say this, it definitely injures a bunch of them. A whole bunch of them are injured. It's just, they're not dying. Maybe they'll get infections and slowly die. Oh, there's a bunch of people on fire. Eh, it's not the worst, actually. You know what? While that entertainment goes on, let's just try the other mortars, the mortars over here. We'll just go back to high explosives. Uh, this one, though, is not nearly as dense as the last group. This is a smaller group. They've got, what? That's the whole map I just selected. There's 280 of them here. So the impact should be less because there's less of them to shoot in the stack. But we are using high explosives, so it should make quite a mess. Shells are inbound. 280 enemies are present. And... That is 69 dead enemies in one volley. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to call that a win. Over here, how are we looking? Oh my god, they're so spread out now. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of them on fire. This is actually pretty hilarious. Yeah, it's like similar things in Visible Area. 315. Well, it definitely has cut down on the numbers. Oh, wow, you can actually see a whole bunch of them burning in there. 
Yeah, I don't think many of them are going to make it. This might actually be more effective. You know what, we'll try one more volley on this crest. Oh, they're attacking, never mind. Yeah, I think they've uh, finally decided to move. Hmm, this was not the worst, especially considering how spread out it made them. Maybe uh, some mixed volleys in the future might be on the cards. All right, everyone, get ready for a little bit of a kill. Well, don't that just take the biscuit. Heavy Metal Pie just took an arrow to the brain. 20% brain function. That's not good. Um, looks like they're permanently going to be occupying a hospital bed until we get our hands on a healer mech serum. Oh, and then we're going to have to decide whether we're going to give it to the dog or to them. Oh, that's a rough choice. Hmm. Oh, damn it. Well, after that uh, horrible problem, Heavy Metal Pie is now confined to, sp to the bed. Now, you may be thinking there's a couple of options here. We don't have to wait for Healer Mech Serum, we could always get them on Luciferium to start healing that brain scar. But I think there is a third, slightly unorthodox option that might be very beneficial. What if we were to, uh, say, install a psychic harmonizer in the brain? Now, uh, bear with me on this one. As uh, J Jason performs the operation, let's just review here. They are super happy right now. In fact, their mood is locked at 100%. And the last thing they remember was mowing down hordes of, you know, badly burned and mangled tribals. They were having the time of their life. And now they're locked in that memory forever. Trapped in joyous harmony forever and ever and ever. And not only that, they're sharing that mood with those around them. They're giving a plus eight mood to everyone else in the colony. I mean, realistically speaking, this is just the most ethical choice to make. They're now in eternal happiness. Why would you want to take that from them? This just seems like the, the reasonable choice. Any decent emulist would do it for any of their followers. Uh, in the background, I was actually equipping everyone now with marine helmets. Not to protect their brains, though that is actually a good thing to have. Uh, namely because they look like skulls. And they, it seems sort of appropriate. Once I realized we could make skull helmets for all of our people, it was like, yes, of course. I even sent out a caravan to go off and grab as much plastic as possible. We still have 324 left. We were going to make about another 10 helmets before we had to do another plasteel run. So this was uh, looking like a good plan, especially considering, what was it? I think the protection on that is 134%, which means the odds of anything penetrating it were pretty slim, especially from the, the bow weapons that the enemies were carrying. So on the, uh, the flak vests, everyone have got like 130 to 145 percentage points, depending on whether they've got excellent or masterwork. We were actually going to be pretty solid around the torso and head. I think the truly dangerous thing about this colony is I could see myself playing this for a long, long, long time. I'm not going to, but there's just so much to do. Like, just upgrade everyone to marine helmets. No problems. Maybe plant some extra dye so we can get everyone dyed up pink. You know, not, not a problem there either. We've got the Devil Strand planted so that we can keep them all in dusters. Not a bother there either. Covered. Uh, when it comes to making flak vests, also not a problem. We did a, a quick run for uh, cloth. We have 800 and something cloth. All we need is components, steel to go with that, and we've got as many flak vests as we want. And yeah, we got plenty of steel, we have plenty of components, and we can make more components if we need them. We can even make more advanced components as long as we have gold and plasteel, and we've been doing some plasteel runs, so we can do that too. We've got everything we need to just slowly and gradually grind the colony up, get everyone a legendary minigun, get everyone excellent helmets or, or masterwork helmets and flak vests and everything along those lines. There is just... Oh, there's too much perfection that can be achieved. I don't think I've ever played a colony where there is just so much potential for perfection. From what I can see, though, I think we have achieved pretty much everything that Emily would have wanted out of us. We have piled up the corpses high. I, I counted up the kills before that last fight. Uh, it turns out it was 16,055. That was, uh, yeah, that was a lot of kills. Also, as well as that, we can hire a replacement for Heavy Metal Pie. That, that's the crazy thing. Like, we can pick up a trigger-happy, tough pawn to replace them and then train them up in shooting in about, like, oh, actually, how long does it take? Let's check time as a colonist. Uh, our newest recruits. How long does it take them to go to about, like, 48 days after they're hired? They're already up to 17 in shooting skill. And that's, that's without any passion in shooting. That's ridiculous. Wait, how are you here a year and you don't have... At your shooting skill higher than 18. That almost seems impossible, Matt. Matt, you've been lazy there. There's, there's something weird going on. This is all my roundabout way of saying, I think this colony is is complete. There's, um, I don't really see a point of them ever leaving. This is, this is paradise. This is just 
their perfection. I think I'll do one last episode on the colony, but it's going to be more about, well, the mechanics, the stats, the lore, maybe maybe a little touch of lore in there as well, just to cover all of that. But for now, I think I think this colony has uh, achieved its rightful place. I, uh, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.